Hello everybody. I had many, many requests from viewers to make a video about this house. But it took me a few months to make this episode because there was only a limited amount of information available on the internet. Finally, after a long search, I managed to complete a video about the Harvey house. So here it is. The house was commissioned by Leo Harvey, the founder of Harvey Aluminium. Unfortunately, Harvey and Lautner didn't go well together. Harvey made many changes to Lautner's design and the final result turned out to be different than Lautner's original plans. This led to huge conflicts between the two gentlemen. Therefore, John Lautner never had fond memories about this project. It is still a mystery why this house is so little known, but John Lawner's disapproval over the project might be one of the reasons. A second reason is the bad shape in which the house was for many years. The house was almost ready to be demolished when it went up for sale in 1998. Leonardo DiCaprio was interested in buying the ground to place a new house on top of it. But it were Kelly Lynch and her husband Mitch Glazer who won the bidding and in 2001 they hired Helena Arrueta, John Lawner's former assistant, to renovate the house into its original condition. Thanks to their effort, the Harvey house is one of the most beautifully restored and best preserved homes by John Lautner. And it's famous for its many events, parties and photo shoots, including a Gucci commercial starring Iggy Pop. The house is built in the Hollywood Hills and it is placed on a flat hilltop. It's surrounded by descending hillsides from the south, west and east. Only from the north the ground level remains more or less equal. From the west, the house looks over the Hollywood sign. From the east, you can see the Griffith Observatory. And from the south, it has a marvelous panorama over downtown LA. The house is placed in the middle of a garden, with many grass fields surrounding it. Because the house is used for inviting a lot of people, there is a fairly large parking lot. From this parking place, we start to walk through the house. There's a massive bronze front door with a decorative pattern that's inspired by the shape of the house. This door is a work of art in its own right and it gives a feeling of grandeur. It's like stepping through the gate of a castle or a palace. Immediately after the front door is the piece de resistance of the house, the circular hallway. To understand the layout of the house, we first gonna take a look at the floor plan. From above, the house looks like a circle, with two rectangular shapes attached to it. The house has many rooms that are connected to the central hallway. I decorated the drawing with furniture to give a good indication of the size. Behind the hallway is a smaller living room. At the left are the sleeping areas. The right wing of the house consists mainly of a large carport. But there are also storage and laundry units, a tool shed and even a greenhouse where you can grow your own vegetables. The hallway is spectacular with its large windows, flagstone floor and a ceiling that consists of circles and wooden beams. The Ludwig Mies van der Rohe Barcelona style furniture make the hallway a complete mid-century modernist experience. In the hallway, your attention is immediately drawn to a massive concrete pillar, which is placed in the center. This column forms the heart of a skeleton, on which a roof made of timber is resting. This roof is covered with a coating of copper plates at the outside. But how was this construction built? The roof construction started by placing a pillar with foundations in the ground. Then a series of wooden beams was placed on top of it. The construction was given extra strength by two large iron rings that were hung up at the underside of the beams. Then four beams were attached at the outer ring. They support the roof of the office and the bedroom. They go all the way under the ceiling towards the end of the roof outside. The beams are mostly resting on the walls of the office. 
After this, a second series of five beams was placed to support the roof of the living room. And they are supported by the chimney, the kitchen and the window frames. What only a few people know is that the hallway was originally open to the air. On this grainy black and white photo, you can see that the hallway was only half the size. And the other part of it was a terrace with a pergola. This pergola existed of wooden rings that were hung up at the concrete pillar, giving the house a somewhat space-age futuristic appearance. Today only a few photos exist of the original structure. It's unclear when a terrace was transformed into a hallway and we don't know if John Lautner designed the final hallway or not. But in later years the pergolas were removed and a new roof was constructed by adding a series of beams to the top of the pillar. These beams are partly resting on a concrete portal that was designed especially for this purpose. The other beams are resting on the vertical wooden window frames. By simply cutting some skylights in the roof, enough sunlight could enter. I really like this hallway, but I guess that the way John Lawler wanted it would be even more beautiful. But unfortunately, the house will never return to its original design. Okay, so far the roof construction. Let's continue our walkthrough. From the hallway, we step right into the living room. The living room is curving and follows the circle of the hallway. The entire facade, made of glass, is pointed towards the west, which creates beautiful sunsets. It has a wooden floor in contrast to the flagstones of the living room. All the furniture is mid-century modernist and completely in style with the rest of the house. The house has two kitchens. The first one is small and is used mainly for making cocktails and snacks. It has a bar with a sliding hatch towards the living room. Behind it is a large kitchen, which is connected to the dining room. This dining room is suitable for giving large dinners and has panoramic windows over the valley. The office has wooden walls with built-in closets. The master bedroom has its own fireplace. Behind the walk-in closet is the bathroom. The jacuzzi is placed in a glass bay window. Let's take a step through the garden gate and walk over the lawn. We go around the house. Here is a small pathway with steps that descends down to a smaller, more intimate garden which is enclosed by bushes and trees. The swimming pool is curving and it follows the circular shape of the house. While you take a swim, you can overlook the skyline of Los Angeles. Built in 1950, this was the first luxury house designed by John Lautner. Before this, Lautner was mainly known for its small, low-budget homes. But with the Harvey house, he went into a new direction, a large house with a daring construction. This would lead to his futuristic and spectacular millionaire homes that would make him world famous. This was your tour guidance. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.